How's it going star seekers? My name's Got Cake and welcome to this SOS review of Clan N, a multiplayer top-down beat-em-up with pixel aesthetics, which sees you fighting your way through legions of samurai and other enemies as one of four members of Clan N who are on a journey to take down the evil Akuji, an ex-member of Clan N who was banished from the clan after he attempted to become more powerful through spiritual imbalance. So the game's opening cutscene has some really well done visuals. Here we see Ming the Merciless, or Akuji as he's known in the game, burning a peaceful village to the ground. Our four heroes appear to stop the enemy samurai from attacking the village, and then we're straight into the title screen. And this is all we get as an introduction to the game's storyline. In order to understand this though, we actually need to head to the game's eShop description, where everything, including the characters' backstories, are explained in great detail. Why not interject the cutscenes with snippets of text explaining this, or have profile pages in the games for each of the characters, you ask? Well, this is just the first of many questionable choices the developer has made with Clan N. So from the main menu we can check out the game's options which are pretty standard. They contain some audio, language and vibration settings, as well as three different difficulty settings. To begin a game we get a choice of either local or online player, and we'll first take a look at local. Following our selection we can either begin the main campaign, or play one of several mini games, all of which are locked until we encounter them in the main game. Now I only unlock two for reasons you'll soon see, but these are generally survival based mini games where you earn more points the longer you stay alive, but as far as I'm aware your scores aren't recorded and there's no leaderboards. So selecting main campaign we then get to the character select screen where we get our choice of four heroes. The game supports up to four players in both local and online multiplayer, but it's worth knowing that each player requires the use of both Joy-Cons. Each character in the game comes with their own attack combos, special abilities and hidden stat points affecting things such as their strength, health and movement speed, but generally they all feel pretty similar to play, so your selection is likely to be one of aesthetics only. Following our character selection we awaken beside a campfire, and head through a short tutorial area which teaches us how to move, perform various attacks and character skills. Upon completing this, we then begin the game on stage 1, The Wilderness. So things get underway and as is the case with many games of this genre, we usually encounter a group of enemies and have to defeat them before we're able to move on through the level. This process repeats until we eventually get to the end of level boss, defeat it and move on to the next stage. Now to deal with enemies in Clan N we've got a number of different attacks. Firstly we have two standard heavy and light attacks, and different combinations of these perform various combo attacks, though you're left to yourself to work these out. A combo meter also builds as we attack, and I'm not sure of its purpose, but I assume you're rewarded with more points for bigger combos. Now the game features fast paced brawler combat, and due to the small size of the sprites, we also get some aim assist which is a bit of a mixed bag. Sometimes it works fine, other times it totally fails to work, and often it ends up dragging you away from enemies that you're trying to prioritise, such as ranged enemies. We have a jump button which can use to both dodge enemy attacks and perform a jumping attack, can dodge roll in a direction with the right analogue stick, and we also have a ranged shuriken attack, though we only get a limited number of these indicated by the shuriken symbol and number next to it beneath our health bar. When stationary, ranged attacks automatically aim at nearby enemies, but if you try to manually aim, you'll find yourself wasting a lot of shurikens, and additional ones are pretty hard to come by. Items can be found in boxes scattered about levels, and enemies also drop items when they die, though we first have to wait for the bodies to disappear which takes a while. But the vast majority of these items are either gold or diamonds which increase our score, or meat which is actually found in abundance and recovers some of our health. We're also able to find portions in these containers which fill one quarter of the circle next to our shuriken count, and having at least one charge allows us to perform our character's special ability. Similar to the Golden Axe games, all charges are consumed on use, and I believe more charges means more damage. Like additional shurikens though, these skill portions are incredibly rare. Now you can also visit several shops found in each level to spend what I'll call ability points which are earned in game, though I still have no idea of how and when you earn ability points, so I assume the granted when you gain enough score through defeating enemies and collecting treasure. These points could be spent to buy additional special potions, shurikens and extra lives, but it seems like this is a massive waste as they're also spent to increase your character's stats, so I really don't understand why they weren't two different currencies. So now let me just get down to the main issue that I have with Clan N, 
As I said before, like with many beat em ups, we defeat groups of enemies and progress through the level. But in Clan End, this process is really taken to the extreme. We beat a group of enemies, the camera pans about an inch, and then another group of enemies appears. And this just goes on and on and on and on and on. Each level is usually broken down into five or six sections, but it's the same process in every single section and this quickly becomes tiring. In most other beat-em-ups that I've played, levels tend to last around 10 to 15 minutes at most, and they usually transition between a few different unique areas in each level to keep things fresh. But in Clan End's levels, you see screen after screen of the same environment in slightly different layouts, and the first level took me about 30 minutes to complete. Whilst I did like the visuals of the game, the environments became nondescript after stirring at them for so long, and the game's music, which is actually quite fitting, just became a monotonous loop of sound. I didn't find a single ability portion and very few shurikens throughout that 30 minutes, so the vast majority of my time was spent repeatedly tapping the standard attack buttons, and by the end of it my thumb was even feeling a little numb. Now levels have a couple of additional distractions which attempt to break the tedium. There are several set pieces which are admit are visually well done but they add very little to the gameplay, like in the first level the volcano erupting causes a few rocks to fall every now and then. There are also sub bosses in some levels which are only slightly more challenging than standard enemies. There are mini games which are quite varied in the design, but again I expected a fun and frantic 30 second mini game, but what I actually got was an overly long mini game, serving very little purpose apart from offering a few items. And finally we get to the end of level bosses. Now considering the game is themed around samurai and battling against Akuji's enemy forces, you might expect bosses to be some sort of hard as nails samurai general, in which case you'll be disappointed to find out the first boss that we actually face is a giant spider, and in the second level, a dragon. Now I don't know how or where these fit into the game's lore, but it really wasn't what I was expecting. The two bosses I fought had their own unique mechanics, which were well done, and beating them was generally just a case of occasionally dodging these whilst chipping down the health until they die, after which a bunch of items will appear, but you better move your ass at picking these up though, as you have about 7 seconds before everything vanishes into a puff of smoke. Now I will admit that I never finished the game, but nor did I want to. I found Clan End to be one of the most tediously boring beat em up experiences I've ever had, at least in single player that is. The game's second level contained exactly the same enemies as its first, plus some small spiders, and it also didn't have a sub boss, and yet completing only the first and second levels took over an hour in total. In fact I only got to the third level which did feature a few new enemies, but then the game decided to crash on me, and I decided to call it a day. Now the game's multiplayer is likely where you're going to have the most fun, as it contains an increased number of enemies and you can work together to slog through each level, but unless you get a bunch of mates round for some local multiplayer then you shit out of luck, as currently the online multiplayer is simply broken on the Nintendo Switch. I tried several times to play with a bunch of friends, but each time resulted in the same outcome, the game would crash randomly for each of us, removing us from the session, and there's no way to rejoin a game once you're out of it. It seemed to be slightly more stable with only two of us playing online together, but again a short way into the first level it eventually crashed ending the game. Now this whole review might sound like I'm just slagging off the game for the sakes of it, and you could argue that I haven't seen enough of it to pass judgement, but as always I'm just providing you with my honest gameplay experience and my personal opinions on the game. I actually really liked the look of Clan N, and its developer seemed like a nice person. There were just a lot of issues with the game's pacing, and many of the game's mechanics still need work doing to them. Now there is a patch coming out soon for the Switch version, which looks to remedy some of the issues that I mentioned. It potentially fixes some crashes, adds what's called a short campaign option, which reduces level lengths a little, and campaign minigame lengths are also reduced. But as it currently stands, I can't recommend buying Clan N just yet at least not on the Nintendo Switch. So now let's get on to rating the game. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with a shovelware stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on what a game offers in terms of gameplay and value for money to potential buyers. And for a rating I'd give Clan N, 1 out of 5 stars. It's an ambitious project by a first time developer, and it does have the potential to be a great game, but sadly both its single player and multiplayer modes have issues, which have me questioning whether the game is actually ready to be released yet. 
So you can get Clan N from the UK Switch eShop for £13.49 or from the US eShop for $14.99. Alternatively, the game will also be available on Steam, Xbox One and PlayStation 4. How's it going guys, hope this review of Clan N helped you out and if it did don't forget to hit that like button and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always subscribe for future Switch Indie Game reviews and you're also welcome to join the Growing Star Seekers Discord community. For now though I just want to say thanks once again for watching and until next time, game on.